start in two minutes. Two minutes. Thank you. Hmm? She's back there in the corner. She's well hidden, Mark. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the regular meeting of the DeKalb City Council, May 10, 2021. Prior to our call to order and roll call tonight, uh, just a couple of housekeeping matters. Uh, if there is anyone tonight who would like to speak to any item on the agenda, either uh, or any item for that matter not on the agenda may do so under public participation, which is item D on tonight's agenda, or uh, at such time when we get to the item uh, that you would like to address on the agenda. Tonight is going to be a very, very historic and special meeting for a number of folks, and I appreciate the, the good turnout tonight. Uh, with that, I'm going to first of all check and see if our city clerk, Lynn Fizikas, is on the line remotely. Lynn? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you, Lynn. Lynn was ill last week and was unable to uh, take advantage of a, of a special recognition that we had for her. But Lynn, it's great to see you well and back with us tonight. So with that, I'd like to call this meeting to order. And uh, Lynn, if you'd call the roll, please. Morris. Here. Sitnukin. Alderman Fidnukin. Alderman Fidnukin will not be with us this evening. Smith. Here. Perkins. Here. McAdam. Here. Burbick. Here. Favor. Here. Mayor Smith. Here. Seven present. Thank you very much. Would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> uh, 
Our first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. And I see we have one gentleman, Mark Sharvat, who would like to speak to the agenda. Until we approve that agenda, Mark, you're not going to be able to do it. So what I'd like you to do, if it's okay, is just uh, ref refrain from that item and, and, and put it in the public participation point. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay, good, good. Okay. It has been requested that from Mayor-elect Cohen Barnes that we add an item to tonight's agenda and uh, that has to be uh, uh, done by a city council member so to get the uh, requested item placed on tonight's agenda uh, I would ask first of all uh, would it, does anybody have any changes additions or deletions to tonight's agenda alderman favor I would like to add the city clerk report to section M, reports and communications. I should say I would move to add that. Okay, so after city council member reports, you'd like to put uh, city clerk report. Yes. Okay. Second. Okay, and Scott, you seconded it? Yes. Okay, good. It's been moved by Alderman Favor, seconded by Alderman McAdams, that we add the item requested by Merrillac Barnes to the agenda. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Morris. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Burbick. Yes. Favor. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Seven I on that motion. Thank you. Tonight's uh, agenda is approved as amended. Uh, Mayor Smith. Yes, Cl City Clerk Fiz Fizikas. Um, well, I'm wondering if it might be more correct, perhaps, to, to since we've added it to the agenda, to also have a motion and vote on approving the agenda as amended. The, I think what, what there was was there was a motion to approve the new item, and now we need to have a motion to approve the whole agenda. I'd entertain that motion, please. I would make that motion. Second. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Favor and seconded by Alderman McAdams that we approve the agenda as amended. Any further discussion? Thank you, Lynn. Roll call. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Seven aye. Thank you. The amended agenda is approved. Now we move to public participation. Uh, we have one item that has been submitted electronically earlier today. Uh, that gentleman has asked that I read uh, this public participation and then we'll move on to a few folks who would like to say a few words tonight. Uh, our first item under public participation is from Peter Vanderbleek, 105 Bar Boulevard, DeKalb. And he writes thusly, Dear Mayor Smith, Mayor-elect Barnes, Council Members, and City Engineer Gill, thank you for all the hard work and listening that has gone into a well-crafted ordinance, one that will help to ensure the safety of our youth and spectators at the venues along Bar Boulevard while providing the same level of safety for the residents in their property along Bar Boulevard. Thank you for being flexible so our part of the city can still be a welcoming place for our active youth and their families. As a fellow Bar Boulevard resident, Mr. Tridel has said in the past, we love our thousands of neighbors across the street. That's why we care about their safety. 
As a larger family, we also appreciate the willingness of the city to allow for more resident parking passes for vehicles in excess of two that are registered at our home. The standard limit of two would have represented a hardship for us, and we appreciate the city's listening and responding to our concern. I also wish to thank Mr. Tridel, who has had the patience to go through the proper channels to address a concern shared by many in our neighborhood. He also showed us all that this issue, the issue of safety for so many DeKalb citizens and our out-of-town guests, is not just an issue for our neighborhood, but one for the city of DeKalb as a whole. Way to go, Mike. You set an example for those who want to make change. I hope that everyone listens. My wife and I urge the passage of this ordinance. Regards, Pete Vanderbleek, Barb Boulevard resident. Where's Mike? Did you hear that when he said, way to go, Mike? So, way to go. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now we move along to uh, public participation. And uh, since we have moved to the agenda item, Mark, why don't you make your comments now on the agenda item? As you know, you've got three minutes or less to do that. And then I'll get you on on your other items. Quick note on, is this on? On the agenda item, very wise move on behalf of the council to adjust the agenda to include the report from the city clerk. Also, since the meetings have been streamlined quite a bit over the past couple of years, it would kind of be nice, it would nice to be nice to bring back the police chief report and the uh, fire department report. Since now we have a full-time officially um, in place police chief. So we, I think the public would be interested in hearing that going forward again. Today is a monumental day in the city of DeKalb. You know why? Our property tax bills all arrived in the mail today. <laughs> so I have a report card for you on how each of the taxing bodies did good or bad. You're gonna like the end of this, okay? I crunched the numbers on properties in my neighborhood and as you guys know, the Illinois Department of Revenue this year mandated a across the board EAV increase among all properties across DeKalb Township. That figure was 4.09%. So that means, let's say everybody left the uh, rate the same, each of the taxing bodies, you would see a 4.09% 4 4 increase on your property tax bill. And a lot of politicians like to brag, hey, we left the property tax rate the same. That means your tax bill went up by 4.09%. Here are the rankings from worst to first of the major taxing bodies from number six to number one. The worst, unfortunately, goes to the DeKalb Library. They were the only taxing body to raise their tax rate during this pandemic. In fact, with their increase and the EAV, a whopping 21.4% increase on average. That, was, that, was, that number just amazed me when I did the calculations. In fact, Greg, I looked at your property, my property, and it was just amazing. The county came in fifth with a tax increase of 3.2%. Fourth was the park district with an increase of 2.9%. The school district was third with a tax height of 2.8%. Of course, that one hits hard because we all know that the school district accounts for a whopping 60 to 65% of our taxes. DeKalb Township came in at number two with a tax increase of 2.5%, but the best and number one goes to the city. Congratulations for the first time in my memory, and I've lived in here since 1981, we actually saw a decrease of 3.3%. So I would present a virtual participation ribbon normally to the city, but this year, the city actually gets a gold star. Let's see if we can keep doing this going forward. So this is good news. So I'm happy to see this, that the city of DeKalb was the only one to actually take in less dollars this year. Let's keep it going, thank you. Mark, would you join everybody else in giving the city of DeKalb a round of applause? <laughs> For that, yes. Okay, uh, the next speaker is Mark Sharvat, who would like to speak on something under public participation, or would you like to prefer Just on, to wait? Uh, presentations. Okay, very good. First one. Very good.
Okay, our next speaker is someone who has watched the city council meetings every Monday night or every Monday night that we met over the last four years. And that's my wife, Ging. And when Ging asked me, can I come and say a few words? I said, you're gonna have to do better than Mark Sharvat sometimes does. You're gonna have to stay within three minutes. But uh, I'd like to call Ging Smith, 139 Buena Vista Drive, DeKalb, Illinois, to make a few remarks under public participation. Allow me to say a few words of thanks to the res residents of DeKalb who have supported Jerry and me during the past four years. It hasn't always been easy. It was perhaps even more difficult for me than it was for Jerry. But through it all, I could sense the pride that my husband had each and every day of seeing him as our mayor. Now as the outer enter another chapter of our life. We made that promise not once but twice during the candidate forums leading up to the election. So Greg, yeah, I'll be honest, I was on the edge of whether to vote for you. So I convinced, after hearing those comments, I decided, okay, let's give this guy a chance. So I convinced another person two also people? to vote for you, two people. <laughs> so I was just gonna say, if we do the math and I went the other way, you might not be sitting there. So uh, I'm gonna hold you to those promises. Um, I'd like to welcome Sasha, Barb, and Cohen Barnes. All three of you will be getting plenty of input from me. And it's my hope that all the elected officials, either online or in person, hold ward meetings. Perhaps we can have a mayoral town hall from time to time. We never had one over the last four years. I kind of wish we were able to do that. You know, occasional town hall meeting to get input from citizens. So even if it's during the pandemic, we can do it online. So just a suggestion. The mayor of Rockford does this all the time and he gets great response. So if a city that large where the mayor can hold a forum like that, I think we can do it in the city of DeKalb. So why not? A reminder that you all have email. There is a little button called reply. It's very useful. And I'll give Mayor Smith credit. You were very good at responding to about 70% of my emails, so uh, you get the gold star as far as hitting that reply button. So I remind our newly elected aldermen uh, to please use it. Even if you don't have time to answer, a simple reply saying that, hey, got your email, we'll look into this, is helpful. I'd also like to wish outgoing city clerk Lynn Fazekas well. I mean, what can I say? She did an incredible job in her role as city clerk, and I appreciate her efforts in following procedures to the letter of the law, and uh, she fought off many efforts that made her job difficult on council, but she held through thick and thin. So great job, Lynn, we're gonna, we're gonna miss you, and I'm certain our new clerk, Sasha, is gonna be a great clerk, and congratulations to Sasha. I'd like to wish a goodbye to Alderman Bill Finucane and Jerry Smith as well. Now I hope you both stick around town because 10 years ago, one of our mayors got out of town right away and I was kind of upset with that. You know, I, I'm gonna use kind of a Jimmy Carter phrase. Historians debate about Jimmy Carter, how he was in office, his legacy, but almost everyone will agree he is one of our best ex-presidents that our country ever had to this day. So hopefully you can do the same for the city. And a final word to Mayor Smith, and I say this with all sincerity, out of all the DeKalb, DeKalb mayors I've addressed and spoke with in my 40 years living in DeKalb, you were one of them. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck to you. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Okay, we now move along to presentations. Uh, I am going to leave the individual who would like to speak to the uh, signage uh, uh, of two inches of snow uh, until we get to that item on the agenda. That's Tom Riley. Tom, are you here? Yeah, Tom, we're, look, we're gonna let you speak when we get to that item on the agenda, okay? Now, we move to presentations. We're very honored tonight to have the Honorable Judge uh, Ronald G. Matakaitis with us, who will swear in our newly elected officials. Uh, the first uh, individual to be sworn in 
uh, by uh, Judge Matakaitis is our mayor-elect and our new mayor, Cohen Barnes. So if Cohen and uh, uh, Judge Matakaitis. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Cohen Barnes. I, Cohen Barnes. Having been elected as mayor. Having been elected as mayor. In the city of DeKalb. In the city of DeKalb. County of DeKalb. County of DeKalb. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, support the Constitution of the United States. the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the state of Illinois. And the Constitution of the state of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of mayor. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of mayor. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Prior to uh, our other swearing in, uh, swearings in tonight, uh, I'd like just to thank everyone. It's been a great four-year run uh, for my family and I and for this city council. And I've said to this city council over the last couple of years especially, we are on a roll. We have great momentum for us, and with this body, I think we can continue that momentum. So Mayor Barnes, do me a favor, would you? Let's continue this momentum. My promise. Okay. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Ron, our next uh, individual to be sworn in is Barb Larson, second ward alderman. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Barb Larson, having been elected as Alderman of the Second Ward in the city of DeKalb, county of DeKalb, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of Alderman to the best of my ability. Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Perkins. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Greg Perkins, I, Greg Perkins, having been elected as alderman of the fourth ward, having been elected as alderman of the fourth ward, in the city of DeKalb, in the city of DeKalb, county of DeKalb, county of DeKalb, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of alderman. Faithfully discharge the duties of Alderman to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please you. You raise your right hand, please. I, Mike Verbeck. I, Mike Verbeck. Having been elected as alderman of the sixth ward. Having been elected as alderman of the sixth ward. In the city of DeKalb. In the city of DeKalb. County of DeKalb. County of DeKalb. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of alderman. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of alderman. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Sasha Cohen, please raise your right hand for me. I'm sorry? Affirm, that's fine. I, Sasha Cohen, 
Sasha Cohen, having been elected as city clerk, having been elected as city clerk in the city of DeKalb, in the city of DeKalb, county of DeKalb, county of DeKalb, do hereby affirm, do hereby affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of city clerk, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of city clerk to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you, Judge Maticitis. Before you all uh, leave, which I would encourage you, if you could, just stay. I have three pro proclamations to read, um, and they're pretty cool. And then after that, if you want to leave, you can leave for the meeting. If you want to stick around and, and hear the rest of the council meeting, you're more welcome to stay. But I just want to make sure everyone knew they had the opportunity to leave. Um, just for a point of order, since I'm new to this, do I need any sort of role for a proclamation, or do I just go ahead and read them? All right, beautiful. All right, the first proclamation we have is International Firefighters Day. So whereas International Firefighters Day was established in 1999 to remember those firefighters worldwide lost in the line of duty, protecting the safety of us all. And whereas the role of firefighter in today's society, be it urban, rural, natural environment, volunteer, career, industrial, defense force, aviation, motorsport, or other, is one of dedication, commitment, and sacrifice. No matter what country they reside and work in, and whereas International Firefighters Day recognizes those firefighters who serve their communities for most of their lives and those who have served for just a few short years. They set themselves apart as model citizens, setting a fine example in their communities and their willingness and dedication. And whereas hailing from all walks of life, they are our mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, grandparents, neighbors, and friends. They protect us without wanting of recognition or reward. In our time of need, they are there with courage, compassion, and loyalty. They are the essence of the true meaning of community. Therefore, I, Cohen Barnes, Mayor of the City of DeKalb, Illinois, do hereby encourage all citizens to recognize not only our local firefighters, but those worldwide, not only on May 4th, but year-round for their courage, selfless service, and sacrifice. Thank you. Second proclamation. National Police Week, May 9th through the 15th, 2021. In 1962, President Kennedy proclaimed May 15th as National Peace Officers Memorial Day and the calendar week in which May 15th falls as National Police Week. And whereas the members of the law enforcement agency of the city of DeKalb play an important role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of our citizens of our community. And whereas it is important that all citizens know and understand the problems, duties, and responsibilities of their police department and that members of our department recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property, protecting them against violence or disorder, and protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression or intimidation. And whereas our police department has grown to be a modern and scientific law enforcement agency, which unceasingly provides a vital public service. Therefore, I, Cohen Barnes, as mayor of the city of DeKalb, urge our citizens to join in commemorating law enforcement officers, past and present, who by their faithful and loyal devotion to their communities have established for themselves the rights and security of all citizens. Now therefore, I, Cohen Barnes, Mayor of the City of DeKalb, Illinois, do hereby proclaim the week of May 9th through the 15th, 2021, as National Police Week in the City of DeKalb. And our final proclamation tonight is the National Emergency Medical Services Week, May 16th through the 22nd, 2021. Whereas emergency medical services are a vital public service, and whereas the members of the emergency medical services team are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury. And whereas the emergency medical services system consists of first responders, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, firefighters, educators, administrators, emergency nurses, emergency physicians, and others. And whereas the members of the emergency medical services team, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills. 
and whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of emergency medical services providers by designating Emergency Medical Services Week. Now, therefore, I, Cohen Barnes, Mayor of the City of DeKalb, Illinois, in recognition of this event, do hereby proclaim the week of May 16th through the 22nd, 2021, as Emergency Medical Services Week in the City of DeKalb. And with that, I definitely want to thank uh, Mayor Smith for just your four years of service. Um, it was an incredible run. These are huge shoes to fill up here, and I will promise you I'll do my best to fill them um, like you did for the four years that you've served. So thank you, and thank you, Ging, for being out there supporting uh, that man. I know, uh, I know what that was like for you. I also wanted to thank uh, Alderman Finucane for his years of service, as well as City Clerk Fazekas uh, for her years of service. And I really look forward to working with this team, this council, in order to continue the momentum that we have going on DeKalb to make sure that we realize the beauty, the wonder, and what I believe uh, the greatness that this community has. And I will, during my four years, always and passionately be proudly DeKalb. Thank you, everybody. So, so with that, with that, everyone that was here for the swearing-ins, you're more than welcome to exit stage right, I guess it is. Um, otherwise, we will continue with the agenda tonight. Thank you. Everybody, you're going to want to get further. Whatever you leave. Thank you. All right. So moving on to agenda item F, appointments. We have none. And then agenda item G, consent agenda. The, the consent agenda. I will read uh, the five items that are on there. What? Pull the mic up. Okay. How about there? Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Okay. So on the consent agenda tonight, we have the minutes of the regular city council meeting of April 26, 2021. We have item number two, accounts payable and payroll through May 10, 2021, in the amount of $1,718,659,000 or 659.66. Number three, minutes of the joint review board meeting of January 22nd, 2021. Item number four, FY 2021 human services funding first quarter report. And item number five, the 2021 liquor license renewal update. Before I ask for a motion, I was wondering if there's any item that someone wanted to have pulled out of the agenda. Hearing none, I would take a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All right, it was moved by Alderman Smith and seconded by Alderman Perkins. Roll call, please. Alderman uh, Morris. Yes. Larson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Wonderful, thank you. All right, moving on to item number H, public hearings. We have none. Item number I, considerations, none. I doubt we're gonna have many agendas like this, right? <laughs> item number J, resolutions, none, which leads us into item number K, ordinances, second reading. So number one, ordinance 2021-016, amending chapter 51, traffic, schedule C, parking prohibited, section 18, no parking at any time except for residents, tow zone, and Schedule E, limited parking, subsection, 10 minutes for the purpose of loading and unloading persons as it pertains to parking restrictions for portions of Bar Boulevard. Uh, I would take a motion to bring this to the floor. So moved. Second. Second. So that was moved by Alderman McAdams and seconded by Alderman Favor. Um, I can't remember, do we have discussion on this? If there's public comment? Yeah. And I don't have those before me. So. We will just wing it tonight. Um, who would like to speak first? Oh, thank you, Sasha. We will figure this out as we go. Uh, okay, yeah, I got it. All right, so first we'll go with Thomas Riley. Um, Tom, you want to come to this uh, podium? And just a reminder, Tom, we like to keep com public comments to about three minutes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Thomas Riley. I live at 107 Bar Boulevard. Uh, welcome and hi to everyone here. Um, my, my concern is about a Bar Boulevard, because it's so long, I, I'm concerned about the 
the parking during the winter months. Uh, I noticed at one time they did have uh, no parking for two inches or more of snow. And I really, really don't want to get into it, but unfortunately I will. Uh, my neighbors, the Vanderbleeks, parked their car in front of my driveway. And when the snow plows come down, they have to go around their car and then they miss my driveway. Now, I realize, you know, people do that, but it's, not, it, it's, it's just rough. It, it's, it's hard for me because I'm older. So I would, I would like to present to the council to, to reinstate those, those signs saying, if there's two inches or more of snow, no parking on the streets, park in the driveway. I mean, it's so much appreciated for the, the members, the, the residences on Bar Boulevard. And I, I have no idea what it is in other places in the city, but I think it's important for the, the people who are doing the snow removal to at least have a straight shot rather than going around all the vehicles on the, on the, on the road. So that's my consensus anyway. So I thank you so much, and I hope you can take it into consideration and vote maybe to do that. I'd appreciate it so much. Appreciate it, Thank Tom. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And then our next speaker tonight is um, Mike, is it Tridel? Yes. Mike Tridel. And again, just to reiterate, if we can keep it to three minutes or less, that would be fantastic, Mike. That will be no problem. All right. Um, because I had a neighbor down the street that pretty much said everything that I needed to say. And um, like I said before, my reply to him is, oh, shucks. <laughs> you know, I mean, that I didn't do it for a lot of accolades. I did it because we needed to get it done. Um, so I want to thank everybody that's been involved with putting this together and everybody that will be involved in the enforcement. Um, uh, Scott and I were talking about the, um, the uh, Huber Park Pirates uh, that probably will have to come and tow. Um, I'm referring back to a Steve Goodman song from years ago. Um, uh, but that's basically all I have left to say is thank you for your consideration. Um, Mr. Nicholas offered something else uh, this evening that I'm wholeheartedly for. And I just, I would urge for the safety of everybody that's involved um, to please pass it tonight. Uh, it went unanimous on first reading uh, last week and or the last meeting, and I'm looking forward to unanimous again tonight. So thank you very much, sincerely. Thanks, Mike, and really appreciate your participation in this whole process as well. Uh, City Manager Nicholas, comments? Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Bynes. Mm -hmm. uh, just a couple of things. Uh, it served up to you as it appeared at the last meeting on second reading. Uh, a couple of things to respond to Mr. Riley. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be part of this ordinance. Uh, what the city does, we have a very long and layered uh, chapter 51 on traffic and it identifies every street and the kind of signage that goes with every street. And as things happen in these long and layered ordinances, some of these uh, references are a little bit out of date. And we've noticed this in the last couple of months as we've been looking through this ordinance and some other ones. And uh, it needs to be updated. And so I'll go on record now as saying that we will make sure that the signage is, is updated in language and then also in fact on Bar Boulevard uh, before the snow falls this year. And we've talked at the operating level about this and that should be taken care of. And if, it, if there's a prediction for snow, call me if you don't see the signs, okay? Thank you. Uh, one last thing, uh, as I was thinking over the weekend, uh, we didn't have much to prepare for this particular agenda, at least on a regular agenda, and I, it occurred to me as I was reading through this ordinance that we still have this, this uh, complicated, uh, we, have, we have one type of placard for the resident and then we have something is sort of akin to the Safe Streets Initiative placarding where if you have a guest, uh, an unexpected guest or family for an occasion, uh, graduation parties coming up or whatever, they come to the door, you're excited to see them and then, oh, I gotta get you a special placard and you gotta fill this out and then you gotta hang it there and then remain, remember to give it to me before you leave. It kind of takes the, the fun out of, 
out of living on Bar Boulevard, it seems to me, and, and the spontaneity. So it occurred to me, uh, we're not really concerned about the safe street piece of it. We're concerned about making sure that people have placards. Why not have the same placard for everybody? Give eight or 10 to everybody who lives there. And at the end of the year, if you need some more, great. And if you don't, you've got eight or 10 for the next year. And I, I would recommend that to you. I talked to Mike, and unless Tom feels strongly the other way, uh, you'd always have to have the placards in a drawer by the door and a couple pencils or pens. It, does that happen anywhere else uh, on a quiet boulevard? I don't think so. So um, I, I would suggest to the council that you move to amend ordinance 2021 dash 016 to require only one placard of identical size, color, wording, and shape for residents and guests alike. So amended. Second. I have a motion by Alderman Morris to amend it and a second by Alderman McAdams. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll. Larson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Furbick. Yes. Favor. Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Morris. Yes. So we will see that the amendment is incorporated into the ordinance before it's signed. Wonderful. So that was to amend the ordinance. Do I need yes. a motion now to uh, approve the ordinance? Yes. Point of information. All right. What's that? Point, point of information. Could I get the text of the amendment yeah. for the minutes? Uh, Andrew Nicholas. Thank you. Wonderful. So at this time, I take a motion to approve the amended ordinance. So moved. Second. Second. That's moved by Alderman Morris, seconded by Alderman McAdams. Roll call, City Clerk. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Verbeck? Yes. Favor? Yes. Mayor Barnes? Yes. Morris? Yes. Larson? Yes. Wonderful. All right, moving on to ordinances. First reading, we have none tonight. So then we're into report and communications. Uh, we can start with Alderman Morris. I just want to welcome all of our, our mayor and our newly elected officials and re-elected officials. Uh, congratulations to you all. Appreciate it. Alderman Larson. Excited to be here and excited to be part of this team and uh, Hope we can live up to Jerry's keep it moving for another four years. Alderman Smith. Uh, welcome to all of our incoming and uh, hope to work with you in the next couple of years. Thank you. Alderman Perkins. No report. Alderman McAdams. No report. Alderman Verbeck. Welcome aboard. Thank Great you. to have you both with us and really look forward to the next four years. Thank you. A reminder, our six ward meeting will be this Wednesday, on which Ward 6 will meet our new police chief, David Bird, along with the uh, founder of the Trash Squirrels. So we look forward to that discussion on Wednesday. That's awesome. That's a great group. From 6 to 7.30 at the police headquarters, second floor. Thank you. Alderman Favor? Yeah, I would just welcome the newly elected officials and look forward to working with you and, again, keeping the momentum going. Cool. City Clerk Cohen. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to thank um, the residents of the city who have entrusted me with this position, and I hope I will be able to fulfill it successfully for the next four years. I'd like to also congratulate our newly elected second ward alderman and our newly re-elected fourth and sixth ward alderman, as well as newly elected Mayor Barnes. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. I am going to be keeping full-time hours uh, for at least the first couple of months of being clerk. So that will be 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. I will be at City Hall. Um, so just as a note to city staff, I will be available for all of the usages of the city seal, et cetera, as I will be in the building. Um, I just want to let residents know that I will be always open and receptive. If you have comments, questions, concerns, needs, uh, my phone number and email address will be on the city's website uh, shortly if they're not there already. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Wonderful, thank you. 
And I just wanted to say quickly, uh, I'm really looking forward, as I mentioned earlier, to working with this council. Um, extremely excited to work with city staff, um, our police chief, our fire chief, whether it's building and codes, assistant city manager, city attorneys, everyone that I have interacted with has been absolutely phenomenal, including, including IT in the back there, um, some of my fellow guys. Um, so I'm just, I'm, I'm excited about the next four years. I'm excited to represent uh, our community and I also will always be available to everyone uh, whenever you need me. Regarding uh, moving to closed session, do I just make a motion to adjourn the closed session? Is that? All right, so at this time, I will take a motion to move into closed session. So move. Oh, yes, thank you. I assume that was uh, city clerk that said that. Um, so we're gonna move to executive session. So I'll need an approval to hold executive session in order to discuss, number one, the purchase or lease of real property as provided for in 5 ILCS 120-2 C5 and real estate as provided for in 5 ILCS 120-2 C6. Can I have a motion to adjourn to closed session? So moved. Second. second. And a motion by Alderman Verbeck and a second by Alderman Perkins. All right, we will move to closed session then. Um, if there's anyone... Uh,